Hello friends. Welcome to Tech Talks Engineer channel. In continuation with first part of the video, let's begin with next bus bar system used in electrical substation. 6. One and half breaker bus system. As shown in diagram, there are two buses, bus 1 and bus 2. Respective bays are connected to bus 1 and bus 2. Line 1 and transformer 1 are connected to bus 1 through breaker and isolators. Line 2 and transformer 2 are connected to bus 2 through breaker and isolators. However, as we can see, transformer 1 and transformer 2 are connected through breaker called as tie breaker and isolators. Also line 1 and line 2 are connected through tie breaker and isolators. Hence each bay is fed through its own breaker and tie breaker by both buses. Means these both buses are charged and are in parallel through tie breaker. This is normal condition. With this system, load of any bay can be shifted on any bus without interruption. For example, to shift load of transformer 1 and transformer 2 only on bus 1, just open circuit breaker and isolators at bus 2 side. And to shift load only on bus 2 open breaker and isolators at bus 1 side. Also transformer 1 and transformer 2 can be loaded independently on bus 1 and bus 2 respectively, by opening tie breaker and isolators. Hence maintenance of any breaker can be done without interruption. This is basically improvised version of double breaker bus system. In previous double breaker bus system, each bay has two breakers, means four breakers for two bays. Whereas in this system, two bays have common tie breaker, that means two bays have total three breakers instead of four. Hence called as one and half breaker system. Now consider fault conditions, in case of fault on bus one, Complete load gets shifted on bus 2. And in case of fault on bus 2, complete load gets shifted on bus 1, without any interruption. Advantages As seen, there is no interruption at all in case of fault or failure of any one of the buses. Disadvantages Capital cost is high since additional tiebreaker and associated isolators are required. 7. Double bus system with bypass isolators this is nothing but main and transfer bus system with addition of bypass isolators to each bay. In normal condition, we can see load is on main bus, with bypass isolators open. Now transfer bus can be used as main bus, and main bus as transfer bus by closing bypass isolators, and opening respective bus isolator. Please note that, shutdown is required to shift complete load on other bus, in order to use as main bus. TBC operation is same as we discussed in main and transfer bus system. Fault on bus interrupts complete connected load, same as in main and transfer bus system. Advantages. Generally main bus equipment are in constant service, whereas transfer bus equipment are taken in service only during maintenance of main bus equipment. But due to this arrangement, role of main and transfer bus can be interchanged, and we can use equipment alternatively. This increases lifespan of all the equipment altogether. Disadvantages. Cost of bypass isolator is added to capital cost. 8. Ring main bus system. This is improvised version of sectionalized bus bar system. As shown in diagram, sectionalized bus bar ends are connected with another bus bar, with bus couplers to form a closed loop, hence called as ring main bus system. And on the loop different incoming and outgoing circuits are connected, such as line 1 with its breaker and isolators, similarly line 2, transformer 1, transformer 2, feeder 1, feeder 2 with their respective breakers and isolators. Advantages. In this system double feed is provided to each bay. In case of failure of any one of the feed, other feed continue to supply feeder, hence no interruption. So maintenance of any breaker can be done without any interruption. Also in case of fault on bus, only associated breakers get tripped, hence fault does not interrupt complete load, thus fault is localized. Disadvantages. If any one of the breakers is under outage, which makes it open. During this time, if any other breaker trips, it may affect one or more than one base, depending upon location of tripped breaker. Also, load may imbalance in case any one of the breakers is opened. 9. Mesh bus system. As shown in the diagram, in this type of breakers are connected with mesh formation of bus. As we can see, bays are connected to node points of mesh. Here line 1, line 2, transformer 1, transformer 2, feeder 1, 2, 3, 4 are connected to node points. 
That means eight bays are controlled by four circuit breakers. This system is used in substation with large number of circuits. Advantages. In case of fault on bus both side circuit breakers open, and fault is localized, hence complete load is not affected. Disadvantages. This type of system provides limited switching facility, since two circuits breakers jointly controls two circuits at node points. Now finally, following important points are taken into account, in order to select suitable one, among all discussed bus bar systems. 1. Cost effective. Bus bar scheme considered for any particular substation should deliver all the requirements with minimal capital cost. 2. Should have simple and easy maintenance. 3. Should be easy to take outages, without or minimal supply interruptions. 4. Bus bar schemes should be suitable for any upcoming future modifications at that particular substation. For part 1 of this video please click on the link. So guys, this is all about bus bar systems in electrical substation. Hope you liked the video, if yes please hit the like button. For more videos please subscribe. Thank you.